and welcome to Martin Fiddler Aviation's UK Tax Week. I am joined by our wonderful specialist tax advisors, Greta Kemper and Adrian Jones. And together we're going to be presenting four bite-sized webinars covering the basics of VAT and customs rules, special procedures, common misconceptions and opportunities that the UK new tax territory presents to aircraft owners, borrowers, financiers. All of this will culminate in a live, interactive, audience-led webinar on the 17th of September. But let's crack on with today's topic. So we're looking at special customs procedures, and in particular, temporary admission, customs warehousing, and inward processing. Greta, starting with you, can you give us a description of each of these? Yes, certainly. Just to explain that these are all provisions that are available to aircraft that have not been imported into the UK. So they're not in UK free circulation. So for example, these are different things, they're for different purposes. Temporary admission is what is known as a simplification. It's a facility that's available to non-imported aircraft that are to be used for non-local residents to temporarily visit a territory and to fly around. So, for example, for private business purposes, for private pleasure purposes. The key in the, mess, in the, in the word is, is temporary. These are not intended for aircraft to come and stay permanently in the UK. So temporary admission is to use an aircraft in the UK. Customs warehousing is essentially for storage. So you can bring a non-imported aircraft into the UK to store without having to import it and without having to pay the import VAT. Inward processing, on the other hand, is specifically for non-imported aircraft coming to the UK for planned repairs and maintenance work. Thank you, Greta. Now, Adrian, in previous webinars, we've discussed import and temporary admission. How, how are these special procedures different to an import? Well, the choice is typically binary. Either an aircraft is imported into a customs territory, the UK in this case, because it needs to, it doesn't meet any of the other reliefs. Um, or if not imported, it is still under customs control. There are no empty spaces as such, as far as customs are concerned. So it has to come in under a particular customs regime. Import, if required, yes. But alternatively, one of the other customs regimes should therefore be applied. Temporary admission can apply automatically. It's the general alternative to import for aircraft that are visiting, as the name suggests, on a temporary basis. But if not temporary admission, you might need a more specific admission, which is more actively controlled by customs. And that would include customs warehouse, the storage, as Greta said, or inward processing, which would be specific for works that are to be carried out on an aircraft. Can you use these at the same time or are they mutually exclusive? They're, they're mutually exclusive. Um, if you don't meet the conditions for any of the temporary reliefs, then the only option is to import the aircraft. And once the aircraft is imported, you don't need to look at any other temporary reliefs. The aircraft is imported and it remains so until exported or until perhaps it loses that status by way of sale or something like that. Um, if you come in under temporary admission, then that's a general permission to allow you to visit the territory, but it doesn't allow for example, for uh, works to be carried out on the aircraft, for that you should use in the processing. And if you are coming in and you don't necessarily meet the rules for temporary admission, but you're looking to store the aircraft or house the aircraft for a period of time, then customs warehouse would be more appropriate. So these uh, reliefs have their specific rules and conditions, which do mean that they are mutually exclusive. You come in for one or the other. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't move between them. It is possible to move between, in the UK, at least, customs warehouse and in the processing and back the other way. 
So there, there is flexibility in terms of changing the reliefs, but otherwise they are mutually exclusive. Thank you. And Adrian, sticking with you and from the, the UK tax territory perspective, how does temporary admission work? How does it start and end? Temporary admission is a very effective, very simple um, and free relief. Uh, if you qualify for temporary admission, then you can simply arrive into the customs territory, into the UK, and remain for a period of up to six months of an aircraft visit, and therefore will leave before that six month period is up. But if you meet the conditions, um, the conditions to do with registration, ownership, and user, then you simply arrive. There are no additional uh, formalities or documents that you need to provide other than the usual documents that you would ordinarily give to the authorities on arrival. And so in that sense, the risk with temporary admission is that you might break the rules. And if you break the rules, then there could be um, fines or penalties there. So um, the best advice on temporary admission is to get advice on those rules. Great, thank you, Adrian. Greta, with customs warehousing and inward processing, my understanding is that unlike TA, these relate to a specific geographical area. Can you, can you explain that? Yes, that's quite right. Obviously, temporary admission is for using the aircraft over the entire territory. Customs warehousing and inward processing work on the basis of an authorization. And that authorization is agreed between HMRC and the authorization holder. And it will cover specific de um, defined approved areas. So, for example, for customs warehousing, it generally tends to cover specific warehouse areas. It doesn't, for example, cover an entire airport. Um, inward processing tends to cover specific facilities. Um, the way these work is that they work under the authorization agreed with HMRC and is therefore, they are therefore operated on the basis of control by the authorization holder. Um, so for example, if you bring an aircraft into the UK and want to put it into a customs warehouse, you need to find an authorization holder who can provide that for you. And they will then guide you through the process, the paperwork, what needs to do to enter the aircraft into the customs warehouse, and then to discharge it or remove it from the customs warehouse. So for example, normally discharge from customs warehouse would be by, by way of export, import into the territory, or moving it to another facility. So between customs warehouse and inward processing, as Adrian's already explained. Um, there are some times for how long an aircraft can be within these facilities. Um, for customs warehouse, in theory, it could be for any period of time agreed with the authorization holder. Inward processing tends to be tied slightly more to the works, repairs or maintenance for which the aircraft is brought in. So if the aircraft is brought in for a specific piece of work, the work is completed at that point, usually the aircraft is removed the inward processing and it is discharged. One thing I should mention is that, um, Martin Fiddler Aviation, for example, has customs warehouse authorizations for aircraft and also for aircraft parts for the UK. We are almost the only where customs warehouse holder in the UK. Um, if you're bringing an aircraft in for inward processing, it may well be that the MRO or the repair facility that you want to use may have an authorization. If they don't, it is possible, for example, for another authorization holder, such as ourselves, Martin Fiddler Aviation, to extend our authorization over that facility for you. Um, this can take up to about a week or 10 days to do that. So you need to know in advance whether that's required. Brilliant, thank you, Greta. Now, Adrian, something that's quite topical at the moment. Can you complete an aircraft sale while it's in customs warehousing? Well, the short answer is yes. Um, this is because when the UK was part of the EU, the UK authorities, customs 
uh, used a or decided to um, apply a clause in the VAT directive to allow them to disregard VAT or, or sales in customs warehouse for VAT purposes. So that means that uh, an aircraft sale can take place in the customs warehouse in the UK. It won't be subject to UK VAT um, because of those rules on disregarding those transactions. This means that the seller and any intermediate sellers in a chain supply don't have to charge VAT and moreover they don't have to register for VAT in order to declare those transactions, those sales to the authorities. So this makes the UK quite an interesting place now to close aircraft transactions because by entering into customs warehouse in the UK, you don't suffer UK VAT, you clearly escape EU VAT, now the UK is no longer part of that uh, customs territory, uh, that territory, and you can close on the ground in the UK, which allows the aircraft to um, be supported by UK MROs um, and other support businesses as necessary. And that's perhaps an improvement on other territories which have traditionally been used for closing. Uh, it also can help, for example, where you might want to apply a UK mortgage. The aircraft is already located in the UK and that would help with that process as well. So it's um, perhaps a significant benefit of the UK's departure from the EU that this is now something that can happen in the UK within customs warehouse. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Adrian. Well, that concludes our webinar on special procedures uh, from a UK perspective. They were temporary admission, customs warehousing and inward processing. Our next bite-sized webinar is going to be on common misconceptions. All of our webinars will be available on our website, martinfiddler.aero. And if you have any questions on these webinars, please don't hesitate to contact us. All of our contact details are available on our website. Until then, thank you very much, Greta. Thank you, Adrian. And thank you to everybody watching today. Bye-bye.